Here we are inside trying to track a NOAA satellite. It's, uh, it's about 1021 in the morning and at 11 o'clock, according to, let me show you, according to this thing right here, 1101 is gonna be the maximum and we're supposed to get 90 or 86 degrees of inclination, of elevation. That means it's gonna be directly overhead. Well, almost directly overhead. Why am I trying it inside? Well, the other day, uh, I happened to take my scanner and one of the satellites was flying overhead. It was at about 85, 86 degrees, so almost directly overhead. And I tried it in my office and it was like, oh yeah, I can kind of hear that staticky beeping sound. Was And it's like, oh, it's right overhead. So I started to walk outside and the minute I walked by this area, the signal got real strong while I was still inside. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna get the dipole or the V-pole, dipole, V-pole, dipole, this thing, and uh, bring it in the living room. I'm kind of in between the living room and the dining room right now. Got the computer right next to it, and uh, it should be okay. Now, I've got, I've got mixed signals from people. I'll put you back. I got mixed signals from people. Some people say point the point of the V, this part back here, north. And then I've had others say, no, 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 it's the radians um, should point north and the point or where the two radians come together at 120 degrees, that should point south. And so there are different people telling me different things. I'm just gonna experiment. I just don't know. I really don't. Do any of you guys know? Put a comment down below. Give me your thoughts on why a V-dipole in a horizontal, I understand the horizontal because it's coming from above me. If I turned it this way, it would miss the signal, right? So, but if you understand, leave me a comment down below. Currently, NOAA 19 is currently um, over, I don't know, what is that? India, yeah. It's passed by Sri Lanka. It's coming my way though. It's coming my way. It should be here in about a half an hour, maybe 25 minutes. We'll come back. Okay, just as a recap, uh, I'm using my newelectric.com uh, SDR Smart. I like this little radio. It was a gift and uh, it seems to work quite well. I've got a little dipole, rabbit ear, V dipole. This is 120 degrees and I checked it with my uh, professional protractor. This is that protractor that I printed out on my printer. Uh, it is quite professional and it does give me 120 degrees and if I lay it over like this or under it it lines up. See? Right now it's flying over uh, kind of Russia, Eastern Europe, uh, maybe Ukraine. We'll see. Okay it looks like it's about to fly over Svalbard. I, I think that's how you say it. Here, take a look. Deep in the heart of the Arctic, a world of pristine beauty and stark contrasts awaits in Svalbard. This remote archipelago, home to more polar bears than people, offers a unique glimpse into the untouched wilderness. Here, the midnight sun bathes the land in 24 hours of daylight, while winters are cloaked in the magical northern lights. Svalbard's icy landscapes are transforming, making every visit a witness to change. Discover Svalbard, where adventure meets the extremes of nature. It's cold up there. If, if I can find the temperature as of right now, I'll, I'll throw it up on the screen in Svalbard. And I'll even show you what it looks like here in Texas, what the temp is here. Evidently, the air is not too good here in Texas, but it looks pretty good in Svalbard. Okay, it looks like uh, there I am, the red dot. Um, it's about to make first contact, you know, as it hits over the horizon. I don't hear anything yet. I just hear static. I think it's going to be a few more minutes, folks. It's just making it over to the top of Canada, or the bottom of Canada, or the border of Canada and the United States. Okay, it's very, very close, as you can see. Start recording. There you go. 
It just flew overhead. I'm holding on to the stupid dipole. What a waste of time. I'm having better luck with my scanner indoors than I am with the recommended dipole thing. Now, it's already, it's already over San Juan Pelosi, Mexico. I'll have to wait till the next time it passes over. All right, so what I discovered was, after desiring to pull this thing apart, um, thinking maybe I'll take the ribbon cable and put coax instead, even though I have a 75 to 300 ohm um, transformer, uh, maybe uh, it'd be better off just to have it coax. And then when I took the screws out, this came out and the cable had come desoldered. So I'm wondering if I was just working on one leg and uh, the, the ground side um, wasn't even hooked up. So I'm going to fix it and see what happens. Well, for heaven's sake, none of it was connected. No wonder it's not working right. Well, that didn't go well. I'm committed now. I find a little of this helps. Not sponsored, by the way. But do uh, enjoy responsibly. With just a touch of sweetness. <laughs> but I'd rather drink it. Snip the coax cable, hear the wire sing. Solder them together, make the connection ring. Crafted with my hands, piece by piece, a homemade antenna bringing in peace. Twisting and turning, my fingers they glide. Making sure every wire's on the right side With patience and care I take my time As I build this signal bridge Oh, so sublime All right, I abandoned the other method, but this worked. There you go, seems to fit in there just fine. Okay, before I put the cap back on there, I better make sure this thing is actually gonna work. So I'll touch the ground, and this one, I get zero, that's good. I'll touch the stinger, and I'll touch this one, and I get zero. Now, if I touch the stinger, yeah, I got nothing, okay? Got contact. We got contact. Now we gotta try it out. But I gotta wait for a satellite. Well, I can put the cap on. There you go. And then the result of the investigation took a dramatic turn when in addition to the mishap pilot's high level of decongestant in the system. Okay, I put a tie wrap around the cable and I'm going to hot glue the tie wrap to this, um, outer thing. I, I I don't know why, except to me, if I just filled it with hot glue, it would seem very permanent. And I don't know that I want to do that. This way I can at least cut the tie wrap and get the thing out. Well, it ain't pretty, but I'm hoping that uh, hot glue will provide enough strain relief. <laughs>